Okay, so here's the basic project. I bought this really cool cloud lamp at Ikea, but it is too bright and it's got this really ugly cord hanging down. So I want to figure out how I can turn this into an LED battery powered lamp. Hi, so we've got a fun little project going. We've got this cloud lamp. But it looks cool, but it's too bright. The LED bulb that came with it is 200 lumens, so it's a little bit bright. So I'm trying to figure out what we can do. I also don't like the cord running down the wall. So this how-to video is going to include a lot of tips about little stuff that you can do for projects like this. Tip number one have a bucket full of miscellaneous stuff <laughs> you know keep some stuff around so that you don't have to go running all over the town in order to figure out how to fix a simple project like this so the first thing that i came up with is i thought all right i can put an led in there so i've got this led set of bulbs that this is intended to be used underneath your kitchen cabinets or whatever to look cool at home and because it's LED, it doesn't take a great deal of electricity. Now, here's the deal with an LED. An LED is, by definition, a diode. So a diode is an electronic component that only lets electricity travel in one direction. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, for our purposes, what we care about is that when you hook up the battery one way, nothing happens because the diode won't let electricity go in that direction and it's not conveniently marked plus and minus so you turn the battery around and now when you connect it it's going to blind me yeah, there we go you can see the, the battery comes on so i have to make sure that i'm careful about what direction i let this go now nine volt battery delightful little tool that you can use very bright uh, a new one would be so much brighter than that. Important safety tip. If you need just enough battery power to be able to light up an LED, the nine volt battery that you take out of your smoke detector twice a year should have enough juice left to last quite a long while in your little project. Now, if you go with a brand new battery, it's gonna be much brighter, obviously, and it's going to last longer but LEDs don't take a great deal of electricity. So where do you find a battery holder? Well, the interesting thing is they're kind of all over the place. First, look through all the junk in your house. <laughs> this is a battery holder, as you can see, that holds three AA batteries and it's got a little wire sticking out the side here. And I can't even remember what this is from, but I've got the, got the case for it. So if I just needed three AA batteries, that would do the trick. Now, the LED that I picked, uh, it needs a little more juice than that. But you can find nine volt battery holders in old toys, in a lot of the junk that's sold sometimes in the, the seasonal aisle at the grocery store. So Christmas stuff, Easter stuff, Halloween stuff. Sometimes you'll find things that take a nine volt battery. If you look at cheap toys, sometimes you'll see something. Uh, what, what you're actually looking for is something that says, takes one nine volt battery, not included, because 99% of the time, the nine volt battery is not included. But the good news is you don't have to use that kind of an LED. LEDs are everywhere today. So here's the big project. I'm gonna put up a diagram here. This is a basic diagram of how a direct current DC circuit would look to light up a, an LED light. Basically, you've got the light, you've got two wires, you've got a switch. Again, where do you find switches? Almost everywhere. <laughs> so if you have a lot of electronics around, you probably have some kind of switch. Now, the one that I've picked, I'll put it way up to the camera there, is one that's got a nice little click motion to it and it takes a round hole. So basically I can drill 
easily drill a round hole in the plastic for the cloud and then I'll have a switch that I can turn off and on. These switches might be on electronic components. They might be very small. Very frequently they're going to need a square or rectangular hole. That's a little harder to do on a piece of plastic, although you can use, if you're good, a utility knife that's a razor blade type knife. The round ones, anything with a round uh, hole is going to be easy because you can just use a drill to drill a perfect size round hole. So the connectors on the end of the switch are very frequently going to be just standard electrical connections like that. And what you use to connect them are little wire ends that you can get an electronic store or uh, both of these components are commonly available at an automotive repair shop. Lots of stuff in cars takes switches and they often use these connectors. Wire? Wire is everywhere, especially if you're in IT, you're not going to have any problem finding wire. Uh, this is nice because it's stiff and this happens to just have come off the back of some speakers that I'm donating to charity, but I figured, what the heck, I've got two and a half feet of speaker wire. That'll be perfect for what I need to do. So let's see, what do we want to do? And then I think, ah, where do I get exactly the right LED to work with just the right battery? Because here's the thing, I love the whole nine volt battery idea, but today electronics are more efficient than they've ever been. And so very frequently a nine volt battery is not only not necessary, but it's complete overkill. Look at when you when you go looking through toys and things at the junk aisle at the store and so forth, what you're going to find is there's tons and tons of stuff that takes tiny little bitty batteries or it takes three double A's or two double A's or sometimes one double A. So I looked at my original idea for the LED and then I looked at other ideas like a flashlight. Unfortunately, the flashlight was not designed to be taken apart. It basically, it went together once and it was never coming apart again. Then I looked at a flash system that's intended for use with a, a camera, a cell phone. And that looked pretty good and it was nice and bright and I knew it was going to be low voltage. So I examined that one more closely. Okay, so here is the somewhat ugly but soldered together components. Simply have the battery, the switch, and then the light pack that I've decided to use. To test it, we simply turn on the switch and the light comes on. So I happen to have cut the wires just the right size so it'll fit pretty much anywhere I decide to finally place them inside the cloud lamp. Okay, so proof of concept. I've got this uh, all wired up. And you can see it's got the switch on it and I've got a 9 volt battery. So I switch it on, the light comes on, that's an acceptable brightness. I'm not, I'm not, not going to have it right against there. Um, so that's good. Now the question is, is, is it too bright and more importantly, is the 9 volt battery too much for this? What you see if you look very closely is that there's a little bit of smoke coming out. So I don't want to overheat this circuit and I don't want to start doing mathematical calculations to get a resistor in the mix. So I'm going to think about just going to a lower voltage. Okay, so this little array holds four AA batteries, which are 1.5 volts each. And it's got a connector, oddly enough, that fits onto what you would think of as a connector for a 9 volt battery. So when I put that in there, turn on the switch, the, the light is still plenty bright. Now we have to wait just a few minutes and see if it starts to smoke. I recommend that whatever you do before you put your final assembly together, that you go ahead and leave it on for probably half an hour because even just a tiny bit of extra current can cause a problem. Now, you can address this by putting in a resistor, and I don't want to get into a complicated setup here, but 
um, it is possible to just put in a resistor then less current is able to flow the light will be a tiny bit dimmer but you won't overheat your circuit this circuit happens to have originally been a 5 volt circuit so it may be that the 6 volts with low amps is going to be just fine we're going to let it sit for about half an hour just to make sure that that's the case and that we don't melt our beautiful plastic cloud we're all finished we've put it all back together let it all dry so that nothing's going to fall apart after we hang it on the wall hung it up on the wall turn the switch ta-da we have a beautiful lamp no cord running down to look ugly on my mural what you've got here is a nice little project and i hope that you saw some tips so that you understand that you can do all kinds of things with projects like this, sometimes with found materials. You know, you can always go to uh, the right store if you've got a Fry's or an electronics store where they have arrays full of LEDs and arrays full of batteries and you can just buy components designed to go together. But also remember that electronics is a lot like cooking. Somebody will give you a very precise recipe and if you follow it, it will come out exactly the way they say it will. But you can also, after you learn the techniques, tweak it a little here and a little there and turn it into your own project. The same is true with electronics. So don't be afraid, especially at these voltages where you're never going to be able to hurt yourself <laughs> and you're probably not going to start a fire. So, you know, feel, feel safe to play around. So like it if you like the video, share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Where's my light bulb? I'll be right back.